Welcome. My name is Mark Bagley, and I'm the founder of MultiRip, the leading hybrid software for the decorated apparel industry. The concept behind MultiRip is to allow an apparel decorator to use one Epson printer with two different types of ink to increase their return on investment. This instructional video will show you how to print an inkjet heat transfer using MultiRip. Multi-RIP comes pre-profiled for different industry inks. For example, on the heat transfer side, Multi-RIP is profiled for Sawgrass's light transfer ink called Chromoblast. And it also comes profiled with Multi-Ink, which can be used for both light and dark transfers. In addition, Multi-RIP has profiles built in specifically for both light and dark transfer papers and also brand name transfer papers. The unique thing about MultiRip is it allows the user to print directly from their Photoshop, Illustrator, CorelDRAW, Corel Paint, and other graphic software programs. To begin with, we'll start up at the top with, with this graphic we're going to print, which is from Great Dane Graphics. We'll click on the image we want to make sure that our image is set in RGB mode. So you'll notice right here it is currently set in RGB mode. Then we'll also go down and look at our image size. We want to make sure it's scaled to the right size that we're going to print and that the resolution does not exceed 200 dpi. When you're printing onto any type of fabric, you will not be able to hold high resolutions. So you're wa basically wasting the ink. In this case, we're going to print at 150 dpi, which is perfectly fine for an inkjet transfer. Once we have our graphic set up, we'll then come over to the top, click on File, and go down to Print. We'll go ahead and proceed. Our print options that we have available, the full version of MultiRip is referred to as the MultiRip Stylish Pro. If all you want to do is put this down onto a inkjet transfer, you can use our Easy Transfer Selection printer. Go ahead and click on that. Click on the Properties and go down to Advance. In the Advance, you only have to worry about two settings with the Easy Transfer. The first one being the paper size that we're going to print. Because we're printing down with a graphic that is 11 inches wide, we could choose to use the 11 by 17 or tabloid if we're going to print onto a roll of paper, we can use a PostScript custom page size. We use the roll. You'll type in what your width is. Since we're printing onto a <coughs> roll of paper for 4,800 in this case, we're going to choose the width at 17. The height of it is the height of your total graphic. In this case, it was just under 10 inches. So we'll go ahead and leave that at 10 inches. Now what you need to know is you have to set your paper feed direction and the way you set it is based off the numbers you have in both your width and your height field. If the width field number is larger than the height field, you would use long edge first. If the width number is shorter than the height field or smaller, you would use short edge first. Once you have that set, go ahead and click OK. The only other thing you would have to do is come down here and choose your RGB source profile. The two that I recommend you testing out first would either be Color Match RGB or NTSC 1953. Ultimately, you need to run your own color chart test, which MultiRip provides, and determine what works best for your graphics. Go ahead, click OK, OK, and OK, and it will begin to print the file. And that's how you would use the Easy Transfer button. The file will then go into the RIP. You'll find the RIP interface will open up and it'll begin its process. I'm going to also at this point <coughs> go ahead and show you how to use the full version of the software. We'll go down, file again, go to print. This time we're going to choose the MultiRip Stylish Pro. Click on properties and the advanced button just like we did the last time. Now you'll see that you have several more options to choose from. We'll start off at the same place. We'll go ahead and choose what our Postscript custom page sizes, again 17 by 10, and we're going to go long edge first. You now have the ability to choose what print quality or resolution you want to print at, depending on what 
ink type and media type you're going to use. You'll scroll down. You'll see the ink type. Currently it's set and defaulted to dye sublimation. We'll go ahead and choose multi-ink since that is the heat transfer ink that we're going to be using in this case. You'll notice two yellow triangles pop up. The yellow triangles are stating that there is a settings that do not match. If you click on the media type that has the other yellow triangle next to it, you'll notice that all of these ones with the yellow triangles associated with it are our sublimation media types. In this case, we're going to go ahead and choose between one of our inkjet transfer papers that are listed down here. In addition with the multi-ink, you'll have the ability to print film positives with the list of the ones that are showing up here. And that is something that's covered in another video. We'll go ahead, in this case, I'm going to choose Transfer Photo Bright because the graphic that I'm using has both a photograph and some bright colors for vector designs. We'll go ahead and choose that. I will also mirror my image. If I have not mirrored my image in my graphic software program, I can do it here. I'll go ahead and click yes. And then we'll go down to my RGB source profile. And again, I'm going to choose the same RGB that I had before, which is NTSC 1953. There's also your ability to select underneath the imposition. This is also covered in another video if you want to gang designs up inside the rip and have them print out at once to save paper. Recommend doing this for film positives, inkjet dark transfer papers, anything that the media is fairly expensive. So we'll go ahead and click OK, OK, and now send the second file to the RIP. We'll bring back up the RIP window. You'll notice and there are four tabs that come across the multi-RIP. The first one is the status message tab. There's an incoming jobs tab, which is now bringing in the new job that we just processed. You can also see on that side it talks about it's an 11.21 megabyte file. In the process jobs and the pages to printers jobs tab, you'll notice that there is the first file we had there. We'll go ahead, double click on the file name. It'll bring up a preview window. And if you click on the page, you'll notice that it'll preview the graphic laid out in a 17 by 10 layout. We'll go ahead, close that. If you go over to the pages to printers tab, you can do and the similar thing with that as well where you can preview it, pause, resume, and start it. But if you go back onto the Pages of Printers tab, right click over the file name. You also have the ability to create a production run, which is something that I recommend you do when you're printing the same graphic multiple times. Instead of ripping 20 copies, we'll rip it once and then reprocess it the other 19 times. If you think that this file that you're printing is the people will come back and ask for a reorder, then I strongly recommend you exporting the file out. When you export it out, what it'll do is it'll save a copy of the very last formatted file that goes to the printer. This formatted file will contain all of the settings that you used in your graphic software program as well as the RIP. So you can reprint this file with using the exact same settings without ever having to go back into a graphic software program and remembering all of your different settings. And that's how you would go ahead and print an inkjet transfer. If you have additional questions on how to use MultiRIP, please visit www.multiripusers.com. If you're looking for more general information about MultiRIP or a distributor, that can provide you a demonstration or sell you multi-rip, please visit www.multirip.com. Thank you.